Tina Cross, um, 67 year old cross dresser, live in Essex. Um, been cross dressing for about 20 years now, full time. Well, I say full time as Tina, um, swapping between Jeff and Tina. But I've been dressing since I was about five or six. By being a whole person, I'm in touch with my feminine and masculine sides, but the feminine side is stronger. So I dress to be seen. Okay, yeah, for the first four or five years of life, brought up in a very um, non-binary household. Mum taught us, my sister and myself, to cook, so do the cleaning, knitting, that sort of thing. My sister and I used to do little shows, swapping each other's clothes for mum and dad. But then when I started school, dad noticed that uh, I perhaps had more feminine traits than he liked, and he wasn't having a sissy for a son, so... I was pushed into the karate, boxing, army cadets, etc. All the masculine things so that uh, he got the son that he wanted. Oh, that was great. Yes, it only lasted about 18 months. It was the back in the 60s. Um, it was to do with our church group. Uh, we had a a couple of guitarists, a drummer, and there was two of us did lead singing on it. Fabulous time. And then my voice broke, unfortunately, and that was the end of that singing career. <laughs> Looking back through a lot of time and various countries, religions, they recognise more than one gender. I mean, the Native Americans recognise five genders. The Indian subcontinents recognise five or six genders. The Aborigines' genders has nothing to do with sex or genitalia at all. It's the way you are perceived in your brain. Um, you're male or female, or you're hermaphrodite, which is both you identify with the person you feel you want to be. That's how I define gender. Sexuality is something different. That is whether you fancy guys, girls, or both, and want a sexual, a physical relationship with them, which is nothing to do with gender. Well, I was fairly lucky. Um, I got out from under my father's thumb at 16 by becoming an apprentice chef, which meant I was working away from home in various hotels around the country. Um, hotel life is quite lonely unless you get talking to the other staff. Well, the first hotel I was in, I was very, very lucky. I talked to two French girls and sort of told them that I enjoyed dressing up and at the age of 17 I had my very first semi-professional makeover um, in the hotels but again you do feel like you're the only person doing it in those days but word of mouth gets round from various hotels you work in the catering trade is notorious for knowing all the um, seedier side of life that goes on and at the time, cross-dressing, being um, trans, was considered seedy at the time. So that's how I learned about it. Mm -hmm. Second hotel I worked in, actually, it was another girl who helped me buy clothes and learn about fashion. Um, but by then I'd been practicing the makeup, so I sort of got quite proficient by then. <laughs> Yeah, it all started that um, early days I had nowhere to go. I didn't have the help that I wanted. I made a lot of silly mistakes. Um, 
which we'll come to a bit later. So, yeah, again with the internet, girls can come to my house, dress with another cross-dresser, dress in private if they can't do it at home, have a nice cup of tea, have a chat, um, give them the support that some girls need. Yeah, the girls have nicked it, nicknamed it Hotel Tina. Um, I do run Christmas dinners for the lonely girls, the ones that have been rejected by friends and family. Um, my family have the 25th, 26th of December. The girls have the 27th, 28th, right through to the 1st of January. Um, Christmas dinner, New Year's Eve party. Um, any events that we're going to, they can come and stay over. Or if they just want to come over for an evening and chill, they're more than welcome. Yeah, that was a very sort of sad time of life. Um, when I first started to come out, there was no internet. And the fetish clubs were the only places we could really go and be dressed. Unfortunately, once you go three or four times to these clubs, just dressed, have a drink, it's nice, they expect you to join in the games. If you don't, you are not welcome anymore. So as the least of the games, Tina decided that maybe getting spanked as a fetish game wasn't such a bad idea. Cross-dressing, it was wrong, so getting punished for doing it seemed a fair trade, a sore backside for being able to dress and go out. Great. Unfortunately, games carried too far, and unfortunately, I actually got raped twice during the fetish scene type thing. Blame Tina for it, and everything was thrown away, burnt, destroyed. Um, yeah, very sad time of life. Obviously, Tina persona is such a strong part of my life it wasn't long before I was yearning to be Tina again so started searching the internet this time we would got a computer I found a place called Trans Living which is a support group for trans girls cross dressers etc checked them out it wasn't a fetish club or so it seemed at the time so Tina bought some more clothes got a new wig first time I went drove all the way which was about 12 miles sat in the car park and turned around and went home again second month because there were monthly meetings I actually managed to get there and get out of the car this time but there was people in the car park back in the car home again third time I thought this is silly you've got to go in there and you you know you're making all this effort I actually got through the door and my what a difference it wasn't the seedy dark little clubs I've been used to going out it's a brightly lit room full of girls just like me absolutely amazing experience and Tina's never looked back since Oh, it's, it's amazing that, I mean, back in the 60s, up till about 75, you could be out and about in the street, the hippies, the summer of love, glam rock, all those sort of things, up till the punk era came in. Unfortunately, the punk era drove us all underground again. You had to go back to the secret clubs to actually be accepted as a cross-dresser or risk being beaten up. Hence the reason I ended up in the fetish clubs years ago. Um, but these days, we can go anywhere. We very often do these days. Um, straight pubs all over the country and we're the talk of the town. There was a pub we went to in Derbyshire, um, the Greyhound in Ashcombe, I think it's, or Asham, somewhere like that. 20 of us. Um, and she's been asking us to go back for the last three years. She wouldn't go to bed until her girls had left. Um, brilliant. And that's how much things have changed. We've become more high profile. We are more accepted. The seedy little clubs are dying out. There's proper venues, proper events if we want to go to them. 
and also the general public accepts us wherever we go. Yes, that, that was right. actually a um, a mistake. Um, <laughs> I'd gone up there to help two other girls come out. First time they'd been to Sparkle. And this one particular girl decided she wanted to go in for the Miss Golden Sparkle contest. Too nervous, could, I, could Tina hold her hand while she signed in? No problem. Tina, that's what Tina does. So, I'm going along. Next thing I know, she signed me in for it as well. Um, there I am, I'm getting ready, up on stage. And I actually came fourth. Quite amazing for the first time. Um, and this other poor girl didn't come anywhere, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, so going for the Miss Golden Sparkle the first time wasn't actually a mistake. <laughs> Well, that was quite, that was about three or four months of hell. I actually got to the stage of feeling suicidal at work. It's, I came out to friends and family at a fancy dress party, which worked. I mean, if it hadn't worked, it's fancy dress, Tina's back in the closet. It did work, everyone accepted Tina, so Tina's out loud and proud. Unfortunately, my son, who's a professional photographer, took the pictures for the fancy dress, but neglected to tell me that two weeks before he'd taken my boss's daughter's wedding and posted them up on the same website. Monday, when I go into work, Tina's pictures are all over. Well, I was a lorry driver at the time, very masculine, a lot of ex-cons driving the fault list, this sort of thing. I was every pervert, shirtlifter, paedophile you could think of. And that went on for three or four months. Um, yeah, I was saying, another quite a bad time. Um, I did get to the point of being suicidal. It was only the support of other girls that sort of kept me on the straight and narrow. But anyway, to turn that round, on my birthday, I'd gone out with a group of girls, friends, and unfortunately, the ringleader from work was in there getting a takeaway with his mates. Um, so I sort of said to friends, look, you know, it's Mick over there. Perhaps he won't notice me. Next thing I know, he sent a drink over. Thank you very much, Mick. You know, carry on, just ignoring. Five minutes later, there's another drink come over and I'm being beckoned to the bar. Um, so I sort of said, look, I'll give him his bit of fun, his mates, come back and finish my birthday off with a no problem. And goes up to the bar. Yeah, thanks for the drinks. Oh, um, it's your birthday, is it? Yes. Oh, you're out with friends? Yes. Who are you going home with afterwards? Well, I was going home with a friend. You wouldn't like to come home with me? And I'm thinking all the time, you know, where's the punchline coming here? And it turns out he actually didn't recognise me at the time. So it's got to the stage where I've sort of um, let him put his arms around me and he's uh, signalling to his mates, oh, it's all right, I've pulled, you know, and uh, let him kiss me full on the lips. And off came the wick. Hello, oh, Mick, how are you doing, mate? Ah! Pushed me away rather violently, but his mates are killing themselves laughing now. And the whole restaurant is an uproar. My mates are all clapping. Um, things settle down at work after that, because he doesn't know to this day whether anyone got any pictures. Um, but the upside of the story, three months later I did the pink day at work for breast cancer. Pink, you don't get any more pink than Tina was that day. Pink tights, pink shoes, pink dress, pink hair, pink lipstick, pink everything. And I drove the lorry all day, which raised over £400 for the charity. But he was one of the first people to sponsor me for doing it. So you can turn people around if you try, persevere. Well, again, that's, that started from saying no to somebody. Um, <laughs> the TV company posted on 
the website that they wanted a girl to come out to friends and family on camera. Well, I phoned up and said, it's not going to happen. It's a private thing. Um, most girls are too timid. They'll tell a brother, a sister, a mother, father first, and then let the word spread slowly. See how it goes. And then I made the silly comment, unless you happen to be teen across, and told them about me coming out at the fancy dress party, etc. Um, so they came down and made a pilot film about me, about the song, sent it off to Grayson Perry and he jumped at the chance to come down and do a short documentary about Hotel Tina um, with me. Marvellous experience. Um, he's quite a strange guy, I suppose, being sort of a genius or whatever he classes himself as. He is, but he's, he's good fun. It's great to work with him. Happiest time actually comes from one of the saddest times. Um, last year, for Christmas. So Tina's a little bit of an agony aunt. Um, I had four girls phoning me up. Very lonely at Christmas, feeling suicidal, etc. But the last one, I had to actually go and rescue her. I was pulling pills out of her mouth and waiting for the ambulance to arrive. Um, and I took a few days away to get away from it all down to Cornwall while I was away a lot of my internet friends clubbed together bought me a massive hamper bottle of whiskey a bunch of flowers to cheer Tina up I know I sound sad but I think that was the happiest time knowing the support I give it was appreciated Right, initially, when I first told them I was going to go to the party as a girl, they were in uproar. Yeah, you can't do that. You've got to come as Gandalf, a gnome, god, anything. You can't come as a girl. I said, yeah, you can. No. Uh, anyway, turned up. Marvellous comments. Um, the boys were a little bit um, taken aback, I think. But accepted it was something that was giving me pleasure in life and if it pleased me they'd accept it now the girls on the other hand whoa they're over the moon dad spends a lot more on his wardrobe than they do so they're always popping around borrowing things so yeah the girls love it the boys are still a little bit indifferent um, but they're fine the girls come around they'll chat they'll have, you know, have a drink with us um, so yeah, the family's fine. All right, there's so many girls out there are still coming to terms with who they are or who they want to be. So many girls still will dress at home. They'll post pictures on the internet, usually legs or underwear or below the chin shots because they're too shy you talk to these girls they want to go out but they haven't got the courage to do it so by me going and holding their hand either going to meet them as their guy self bring them back to my place they can dress in private in comfort for the first time in their lives usually with another tea girl and after that, very few of them look back. I um, also arrange country house weekends in various places around the country. Normally take between six and 12 girls. And a lot of these girls, it's the first time they've ever been out in public anywhere. And just showing them that we are accepted, um, giving them that little bit of confidence that I've got seems to help them tremendously. Find a good, friendly CD club first. 
if you've got a friend to go with, go with a friend. Don't dream the dream. Come and live the life. Be out there. There's nothing wrong in being out loud and proud. The world does accept us. There's so many girls are down because they cannot come to terms with who they are themselves. It's this fight between man and a bit like I had when I was younger and dad wanted the macho boy child and I wanted to be the sissy boy child. Um, it's that fight in their personality. All you can do is talk to them. Try and point out that it's not wrong to be both. Be both if you want. Then decide which way you want to go when you've got that confidence. Yeah, for all you girls that are sitting at home there, not doing anything about being who you want to be, find someone to get in touch with. Um, you can find me on Facebook if you want to get in touch with me, but there's other girls all around the country now willing to hold your hand, get you out there, so you can live the life, be the person you want to be.